The weather looked quite different in 2002. That year, the monsoon rains hardly came at all to parts of India. That caused a terrible drought. It is the life-giving water source for the country's farms. More than 500 million people, around half of the Indian population, rely on the monsoons to irrigate their fields. Greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide make the air over the Indian subcontinent heat up more in the summer months. The moisture-laden air from the sea then moves in, releasing large amounts of precipitation, like the rains that fell in October in the southeast of the country. Hello, Digvijay and I will now discuss the prospects of carbon capture and storage in India. India accounts for about 6% of the total CO2 emissions in the world. Starting off, we think the four factors that drive prospects of CCS in India are shown here. Like Jairam Ramesh said, for India to keep up with its growth rate, India must invest in clean coal technology. Three methods that can be deployed are shown now. In pre-combustion capture, coal is combined with oxygen to create a gas. It's made up of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Adding water to this gas causes a reaction. It converts the carbon monoxide into hydrogen and CO2. The CO2 can be safely captured, while in post-combustion capture, the fossil fuel is burned as normal. But before the flue gas travels up the chimney, it passes through an absorber column. This is filled with liquid solvents called amines, which absorb the CO2 before it can enter the atmosphere. Oxy-fuel process. Before combustion, nitrogen is stripped from oxygen in an air separator. The leftover oxygen is then purer than the normal air we breathe. When combusted with a fossil fuel, it produces CO2 and water vapour. This combination is put through turbines to generate electricity. Afterwards, the water vapour is cooled, condensed and removed, and the remaining CO2 gas is safely captured. Now moving on to the geological factors, a detailed assessment was carried out for the potential storage sites by the British Geological Survey in the year 2008. The results from the survey suggest that the storage of CO2 in coal in India is likely to be constrained because these coal reserves can easily be mined and used as fuel. Moving on to the economical factors. This is a clear toss-up between an environment-friendly technique and a cost-effective one. Overall, it has been estimated that capturing, transporting and storing the CO2 from a new gas or coal-fired power plant would increase the cost of electricity generated by between 37% and 91%. This poses a valid question. Is CACS the priority of the country right now? We now move on to the last bit of our analysis, the stakeholder impact. Three main stakeholders for the implementation of CCS in India are government ministries, private bodies and NGOs. Ministries are against CCS in India, private bodies listen to what the ministries say and NGOs are for it. We know that fossil fuels are set to account for a significant proportion of overall energy uh, consumption, energy use in the EU in the coming decades. If we continue to use fossil fuels, we need to do something about the carbon, so the need for CCS is clear. The majority of member states are either indifferent to CCS or opposed to CCS. If we didn't develop carbon capture and storage, we were stuffed. I think it's very possible that a number of member states are likely to say yes we believe in decarbonisation and yes we buy into the 2050 targets but let's wait for a little while before we actually do anything about them. As seen in the previous video, each stakeholder has a different agenda and different perspective. We also saw that the European countries are taking efforts to implement CCS in their nations. So why should India stay behind? That's all and thank you for watching.